Welcome back to Kermode Uncut, where I'm sitting down with your comments uh, about my blogs on the site. A couple of things which have uh, provoked lots of response from you. Firstly, I said uh, last week that Colin Firth was dead cert not only to get Oscar nominated, but also to win the Oscar for a number of reasons. You know, he's, uh, he's playing a royal, he plays a royal, he hangs out with commoners, the Americans absolutely love that. These responses from you, this from Ed Rigg, because I'd said that the film related to the Queen, which was about the Queen and her relationship with Tony Blair. In what ways was Tony Blair an ordinary person? Fettis College, followed by Oxford, followed by MP, then leader of New Labour movement, and then Prime Minister. Are we all ordinary, if not royal? Well, sadly, I think the etiquette says yes, we are. I mean, bear in mind, there's been a lot of stuff in the press about the fact that uh, uh, the Prince uh, is about to marry the commoner, Kate Middleton. She's obviously not common in the way that you and I understand that word. Uh, this from Sally W. How can Firth not get an Oscar? It's a film about royalty featuring a non-disabled actor playing a disabled person. I have a dream that one day there'll be a serious Oscar contender, a brilliant actor who is a disabled person playing a disabled person in a film which removes rather than reinforces the notion that cure is the route to acceptance. Um, one of the other things that really provoked people was that I had said that the Americans love this kind of thing, you know, as if this is somehow a transatlantic trait. This from Generic Mammal. We Americans have a particular interest in movies that depict royalty getting involved with commoners, do we? Really? Never heard that before. Given that Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon grossed more stateside than all the films you've mentioned combined, I'd say we have more of an interest in watching Asian people flying around on wires. Except that we don't have a particular interest in that either. And this from Bob Box, perhaps my favourite comment of the week. You see, the thing is, in America, they just love that scenario. Thanks for pointing this out, Mark. It's not like the films you mentioned received awards anywhere else. Oh, wait, just check the BAFTA nominations. You see, the thing is, in Britain, they just love their own films. Something else that came up from this was that I said I'd be very happy for Colin Firth to win the Oscar, deserved win, but I wanted him to win for a film, Trauma, which was made a few years ago and very few people saw, and many of you have seen it and wrote in about it. This is from Jonathan. I agree about Trauma. It's a hugely underrated film. You may be interested to know that although Colin Firth didn't win the BAFTA for it, the film's website did win the film website BAFTA. Such a thing did exist, though, doesn't anymore, back in 2005, and it's still online, and it is, and I have checked it out, and it's a very good website. This from Kelly, Watch the Stars. I'm glad you like Trauma. It's a very underrated film, and I'm a big fan of Mark Evans. Snowcake is my all-time favourite film. Sigourney Weaver and Alan Rickman are perfect in it. House of America, My Little Eye, great films too. I'm really looking forward to his new film, Patagonia. And then this from Crash Landon. Well, I'll watch Trauma if I can get my hands on it. I just hope it's better than the Dario Argento version. Now... According to Alan Jones, the internationally renowned Dario Argento expert, the Dario Argento film is called Trauma. I'm not making that up. As far as trauma is concerned, and I've said this before in the blog, the first time I saw it, I saw it with the reels in the wrong order. And I chided James King, the Radio 1 film critic, for saying he didn't understand it. He said it didn't make any sense. It was all in the wrong order. I said it's non-linear editing. Then I discovered it was in the wrong order. I went back and saw it in the right order. I actually prefer it in the wrong order. On to the subject of Blue Valentine and its rating in America. I said that the film had an NC-17 rating originally, was overturned, given an R rating, and there's been much cheering about this, but that there was a problem that in America the NC-17 rating isn't accepted. They don't have a proper adult category. Your response is to this, very intelligent. This from uh, CH108, not a name that rolls off the tongue. Actually, the NC-17 today means no one 17 and under can see the film. So it's the same thing as the 18. It used to be no children under 17. So essentially, it's, the age rating's the same. I think the final nail in the coffin might have come when Showgirls came out in 95. This is a very good point. Which was supposed to be the big budget film that would bring the NC-17 into the mainstream circle. But the film flopped got terrible reviews, and because of the nature of the film and its content, foolish distributors and cinema chains now forever believe that the NC-17 contains sleaze and pornographic images, so they don't want to be associated with it. It is true, the amount of damage that Showgirls did to the NC-17 rating is really quite astonishing. Interestingly enough, recently, critics have started to reassess Showgirls and to say, in fact, the film is much better than anyone thought, that it's bleak, that it's brutal, that it's tough, that it's realistic, that it's a film that actually people took against because the characters in it are so hateful. I still think it's just rubbish, and I like Paul Verhoeven. 
Now, many of you referred to a very good documentary by Kirby Dick called This Film Is Not Yet Rated about the iniquities of the American rating system. Interestingly enough, when that film was released on DVD here, it was released with two different covers, one depicting a naked man, one depicting a naked woman, so you could decide your own prejudices. Also, if you're interested in Kirby Dick, check out the documentary he made about Bob Flanagan, Supermaskers. That's a terrific piece of work. I'm going to finish with this from Scott from Toronto, who for me really nails the issue with the NC-17. The problem is purely a financial one. If a cinema wants to maximise its profits, it will fill most of its screens with R-rated films, where all one needs to do is to be tall for one's age to get in, rather than NC-17 films, where one is going to have to present ID and risk being denied a ticket. See, there's the key phrase, being denied a ticket. In the end, the American problem is probably less to do with morality and more to do with money. The thing is, the cinemas don't like showing films that not everyone can see, because if not everyone can see them, then not everyone is going to be able to pay for them. Thank you.